Thanks so much, Randy. Let's go right back to our callers. Next up is Dean. He's listening in Raleigh, North Carolina, Sirius XM 131. Hi, Dean. Hey, Hank. How you doing? I just uh, want to tell you that I uh, really appreciate your ministry and uh, uh, pray for you often. Thank you. Yeah, I got, the question I have is um, if a Christian man commits adultery or gets a divorce, uh, then repents, can he be restored to church service or to Christian service in the church uh, as a deacon or elder, or is he actually disqualified from that office in accordance with the uh, qualifications listed in Titus and Timothy? Not not that he couldn't serve in some other capacity, but there are those offices now beyond him because of, because of that sin, even though he has repented. Well, my my sense is that God uses broken vessels, and if there is genuine repentance and genuine restoration within the disciplinary function of the church, yes, someone can be used for God's glory and for his service within the context of the church. But you're right. I mean, if you look at uh, 1 Timothy chapter 3, Paul says that a deacon must be the husband of but one wife. He can't be involved in polygamy or any other kind of uh, sexual perversion. Must manage his children in his household well. Because uh, if you can't manage your own household well, how are you going to manage the household of God well? And those who have served well will gain an excellent standing and great assurance in their faith in Jesus Christ. So, yeah, they have to be those who are worthy of respect. They can't be malicious. They can't be intemperate. Uh, They have to be trustworthy, and that has to be established, and that establishment takes place over time. So I I don't think that any church ought to be uh, presumptive in this matter or should take lightly the sins or the brokenness of someone, but God does use broken vessels. I mean, I think about the fact that God continued to use David even after his great sin of not only adultery, but murder, also the sin of taking a census. Uh, The sword never left his home. In other words, the consequences never left, but he was genuinely restored through repentance. He says, save me from blood guilt, O God, the God who saves me and my tongue will sing of your righteousness. And then he says, then I will teach transgressors and sinners will turn back to you. So uh, David continued to be used despite his sin, and the reason was there was genuine repentance, there was genuine change, there was genuine discipline from the hand of the Lord, and he was restored as a result of that. The idea that God cannot use broken vessels, I think, militates against the idea of Scripture. But I, I think there's a further note that should be made here. I think that the way you phrase the question brings some troubling aspects into the circumstance. In other words, you can imagine someone before they were a believer or a genuine follower of Jesus Christ doing all kinds of things, but once someone becomes a genuine follower of Jesus Christ, then the very idea of divorcing your wife becomes anathema. I mean, we're supposed to be examples of of the body and bride of Christ, right? Uh, we're supposed to be examples of giving ourselves up uh, for our wives. And, and so to, in some way, to violate that is a very, very serious sin, you know, especially for someone who is uh, going to be uh, a leader in the household of God. So I think that needs to be taken into consideration in a very serious fashion. In other words, what I'm saying is that in some way, the question, not that you intended it this way, can can turn out to be a, a trick question, because is this person who is getting a divorce really committed to Christ, or are they still committed to doing it their own way? <laughs> 